demonstration. Hopefully you all know about cow slip, but um, for those who, those who don't, it's the original orthopaedic shoe for the treatment of lameness in dairy cattle. Um, cow slips is unique because it is the rigid outer wall to support the chief weight bearing area of the cow when she walks. Um, I've got some for sale here today and um, some wrist protectors and roto clips as well. So if you have any questions, please come and ask me. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to be at Agriscot again. We're just going to demonstrate the routine trimming of dairy cattle. And if you've come across any problems, I'll point them out to you. If anybody's got any questions as I'm going along regarding feet, foot baths, anything, diet, whatever, just shout out and we'll get the microphone across to you. Yeah. This looks like a, a nice easy one. Uh, these cows are in the sort of last stages of lactation. They're going to be dried off in a few weeks' time. So this is just about the ideal time to, to do it. Come on, let me stand still. Uh, the first thing I do with every foot is measure the inside claw. And on this one, she's just about the perfect length, although she's just got a bit of a curl on that inside. On the back feet, all the pressure is taken in this outside claw. When the twisting and turning and everything, all the weight is taken up here. And you can see there's a much bigger heel here than this inside claw. So, and said, so that inside claw is the right length, but it's just got a bit of a curl in, so all I'm going to do is just take a bit off the front and then all I'm going to do is just tidy it up, get rid of all the cracks in the heel. And at the moment, I don't need to investigate any more than that. It's nice and flat, it's sitting all flat on the floor, but because she's got such a big height in this one, I want to leave that one. So, and then take the outside claw to the same length. Even if the foot is right down there, I know I can take it back to the seven and a half centimeters. If it was a really taller cow, slightly taller than this one, I would leave it slightly longer. Or if it was a jersey, I would take it back a bit shorter. But you just assess every cow as they come in the crush. And I'm just gonna take a bit of that outside wall off to make it easier for the knife. You can see there's a bit of a, a hole there. We might find something under there. But I'm just scraping the back of my knife Make sure there's no stones. And then just nice, easy cuts, the whole length of the, the claw. And there's a bit of white line damage there, but that's cut out. And there's quite a crevice there. A typical spot for an ulcer. Come on, lady, stand still. The ulcer will appear here because of the, the, the pressure that is caused all because all the weight was bearing on this outside claw. So I'm just going to reduce the height as much as I can in this outside claw. So she's carrying the weight on that inside. And then just trim out all that hollow. Come on, ladies, come still. Taking all the cracks off the heels as we go. And then it's quite a crevice under there. And it's a matter of removing all that loose horn to get the new horn to grow. There's a bit of fluid under there, just water and muck. And I'm just going to use the other knife and just cut it up. Again, I'm just taking very thin slivers. In this bit here, she's very soft. This cow wasn't lame, but in a month, maybe six weeks she would have been quite lame and then after the dry period that's just when she would have been coming back into milk and there would have been a problem and this is the early early stages of an ulcer it's quite sore and tender under there come on girls tell me stuff but all I'm going to do is try and remove all the loose horn from around the ulcer. Try not to aggravate it and cause more damage. 
and get rid of all this loose horn above it. And you're just taking the pressure off it and by removing the pressure she's not aggravating it every time she puts her foot on the floor whereas before I started trimming that was overgrown over that and every time she put her foot on the floor it would have been pressing on that. And then by taking the pressure all around that it's taking it off I mentioned briefly before the pedal bone. The pedal bone is the very last bone at the bottom of the foot and when the hoof gets overgrown like that it's pressing. The pedal bone's got a little tiny point on it. You could almost say it was designed wrong because when the foot gets overgrown it presses the quick which is the inside of the foot that holds all the nerve endings and the blood capillaries and it presses the quick onto that little lump and that's why you always see an ulcer there. Very rare you'll see an ulcer down here in the toe. Sometimes you get them on a, a wall also because they've had wall damage. But that is what we call the typical spot for ulcers. And it's, it's an injury rather than an infection. And, and it's all caused from the overgrown hoof. So regularly trimming the, the feet, you're reducing the risk of that. But see, she's, she's most surely gone the whole lactation since last year. Now, because I haven't taken any off that, she can now carry the weight on that claw more than that one. If, that ulcer, if there was no height in that claw, and that ulcer was, you know, it, it's quite hard, so it's not causing her any damage. And although it's dirty, it, it's taken the pressure off it. And if I pick that foot up again in about a month's time, It'll be like a sore on your finger. It'll dry up from round the outside and it'll slowly get smaller and smaller. And I know through, if I pick that up in six weeks time, there would be very little there. But when you've got a, a clinical case like that, it is an idea to trim them again, you know, in six or seven weeks time, just because what might have happened if it, her metabolism will produce a lot of quick growth now to try and heal herself. So that might grow over and you'll get what we call a double sole. So it's a matter of taking that off again. And normally two trims would, would do it. Now if that also was any worse than that, I would put a block on this inside claw. But there's no need to put one on this, but I will just show you the preparation. You want to get rid of as much as muck as possible on the hoof, and I just use my rasp to clean it off. I'm not going to take any height off it. And then what I normally do is just get the knife and just put some scores in it to, to give the glue somewhere to stick. But she's got quite a small foot and these are the extra large ones. So if I put that on, you can see it's far too big. So we'll get a, a smaller one. They, they come in all different sizes and they're so easy to use, but ideally you, you try. See, that one's a bit short. So, and that one's a little bit big. Is the, is the one in between them two? Yeah. That's right. So, see, we've gone in between. And that's just about perfect. You want it to come back and to cover the heel. If I put that small one on, it would have been sitting about there. And every time she put a foot down, it would have been sticking up like this. And the big one, there would have been too much surface area and it would have been flopping around and she would have been getting it caught. So that's just about the right length. So then you, you just get the powder and the liquid and you, you mix it together there in the toe. And I normally, this time of year, just give it a few minutes just to start going off in, the, in here before I put it on. And then I'll put it on and then I just tap it up like that to make sure all the glue comes in. And you want it sitting absolutely flat so she's carrying all the weight evenly all over the foot. And then normally that'll, that'll keep itself on for about eight weeks. Any longer than that you need to take it off because then because she's carrying all the weight on the one claw she would cause damage to this claw.